Hi guys, um, just uh, an update on my reptile room. Um, I do this every once in a while. Uh, and uh, a little bit of care for you, um, for people that don't know and people that want to get into it. Um, this is the way I do things, so don't take the way I do things as uh, as gospel. Um, you know, but the way I do things is a good all, all rounder and a good start. So here we go. So we're going to start with. Uh, my male panther chameleon. Um, this is a four foot, four foot viv, um, four foot viv wide, four foot high, or four and a half foot high. Should no five foot high, sorry, because it's the same as Ernest, five foot high, and it's three and a half foot deep. Um, obviously, I've got a lot of different branches in there, a lot of different thicknesses um, to get his little toes working. There he is. His name's Jeremy Fisher. Um, he thinks it's feeding time. Yeah, he he wants feeding. No, there's no food for you. You've been fed this morning. Um, I like to keep the humidity up in here. Obviously, they're from uh, Madagascar. So, um, you know, the rainforests there are uh, very humid. Um, so I I have got a, um, a spray system, but it's not set up at the moment. So I, I hand spray these guys. I, I spray them twice a day. I soak this in the morning because he's got live plants in here as well. Um, and what he'll do, he'll come round and drink off these little leaves. Um, still a bit damp there, look. Um, so yeah, what I do is I, I spray him in the morning, um, and he seems to he seems to love that. He doesn't have any trouble shedding. He doesn't have any trouble eating. Um, you know, heating wise, I've got one bulb heating. Uh, that's a hundred watt bulb, and it's on a thermostat here. And I've set that to uh, 100 degrees. Um, it gets probably about 101 where the where the sensor is, but he very, very, very rarely basks there. He normally basks on this branch here because he gets quite a bit of heat um, from there, and he gets his UV from the top. Um, and then obviously I've got these these 10 watt bulbs that just provide a lot more lighting. Um, they they um, spring out a little bit of heat as well. So I've turned his thermostat down a little bit, um, and he seems to be thriving. Um, yeah, so and substrate wise, it's just cocoa fiber topsoil um, on on a you know one of the drainage mats um, with the clay bores underneath for a bit of drainage. Um, and underneath, I have actually got a drainer in case it gets a little bit too clogged. There's a little, little bit of a drainer there with a clog in it. Um, if it starts getting a bit sodden in there, then I'll just take the clog out of there and put a tray under there and let it drip out. Um, yeah, so that's the um, panther chameleon. Um, you always want to, you know, they get, they do get quite big. He's probably, he's going to get a bit bigger than that. Um, so you can see if I put my hand next to him, he's he's a he's a fair size, but he is going to get bigger than that, get a lot more chunkier as well. Um, so you do want to provide them with with a little bit more than what you can, um, and make sure it's busy in there. You know, make sure they've got a lot of a lot of hiding spaces. Um, moving on to the uh, veiled chameleon or Yennings chameleon. Um, this is Erna's tank. Um, this is a. Uh, five foot wide five foot high three and a half foot deep tank same sort of thing um obviously the guy they don't need it as hot as the um panther chameleons um same sort of substrate there's a little bit of bark on top of this because uh there's not there's no live plants in this one um i did have some live plants in here and he absolutely destroyed every single one of them and they didn't survive so I gave up on that in the end. Um, he seems happier with these plastic ones. He doesn't try to eat them, but he does drink off the leaves. Um, or when I'm spraying it, he will come down to the hose and stick his head underneath the hose and, and drink off the hose. Now you'll find as chameleons get a bit older, they seem to be in shed constantly. Um, when I got this guy, he had a little bit of a stuck shed on his spikes on his back. As you can see, it got a bit infected. Um, so I treated it and it's now healed nicely don't you bite me it's now healed nicely um and he's thriving in there um you got to be careful with their diet i i made the mistake of giving him some morio worms as a treat and he kind of went off everything except for morio worms he's like i'm only going to eat these so i starved him for about a week um and stuck some locusts in there and he's back on locusts now so 
you know, I've I've learnt my lesson there. But yeah, you wanna you wanna mix their diet up a little bit, give them some dubia roaches, um, locusts. I normally do locusts, dubia roaches, some mealworms every now and then. Um yeah, so same sort of thing. His basking spot, his temps, I've got it I've got it set a little bit higher because um oh, sorry about that, I had a a phone call took over. Yeah, so his um heat spot, if this is where I was at, I think it is. Um yeah, I have he sits, his heat spot sits, let me have a look. Um, I've had the doors open for a, about five minutes now, so he's probably lost a bit of heat. But his heat spot, it's saying 86, but it normally sits at around 90, 97. Um, and the rest of the tank obviously sits like the higher up, like this sort of area. It sits at around 80, and as you come over here, it drops down to about 77. And then obviously he can come hot and cold and this that, and the other. Um, I know a lot of people don't say don't have a pond in or any water in with your chameleon. He doesn't go anywhere near it. Um, he's not bothered by it. He's never fallen in it. Um, it just houses a little turtle. He's in there. And if my chameleon ever starts venturing down there, but he hasn't in the last couple of years. Um, if he does ever venture, da venture down there, then I'll, uh, I'll just put a mesh over the top of it. With a little hole cut out for the turtle to get in and out, but yeah, so that's um, that's the Yemens. Um, obviously, they do get a little bit bigger. Um, you know, the males get quite quite large, so you know you want to provide them with a, a good bit of space and a lot of hiding. They love to hide. Um, this is obviously my my female veil chameleon. Um, she's got loads of hiding spots. She's carrying eggs at the moment, so I don't want to disturb her too much. Um, yeah, and it's the same situation in here. This is a little bit smaller because she's quite a bit smaller. This is um, five foot high, three and a half foot deep by three foot wide. Um, but as you can see, there, there she is, but there. Uh, whoa, I don't know if you can see her. Well, oh, can I not see her? She's there. As you can see, she's not She's not the biggest. She's about about the size of my hand, roughly maybe a bit smaller um same sort of care for them um spray wise i normally give them a because in you know um yemen and that they don't have that much rain and stuff like that so what i do is i tend to miss these guys down um either really early in the morning or last thing at night um just to keep them nice and moist just to keep the humidity there a little bit um then we move on to the mountain horn dragons. Um, these babies, uh, I miss these guys a lot. Um, I miss them probably about three times a day. Um, they love it and they drink constantly. As soon as the water goes in there, they're straight on the drips and they drink. They can't, they're like chameleons, they don't drink from still water. Um, substrate wise, it's just anything that will just hold the humidity a little bit. There is a little heat mat under there just to um, spread it around a little bit. Um, these guys like it a bit cooler, um, their basking spot is probably around 80, um, but you'll find they're never in the basking spot, they're always, always in the colder areas, I mean, most of the, t most of the time, they're sat in this pool, you know, in the freezing cold, um, and they seem to love it, so that's the, um, mountain horn dragons, they get, they get to about 6 to 8 inches with a tail, you know, maybe a bit bigger. And they're really hardy lizards, you know, really easy to look after and really, really good fun. Um, especially to watch hunters' babies. They're, they're hilarious because they just miss and they're crap. Um, yeah, moving on. Uh, Nile monitor. Okay, so provide... Oh, she's had a wee in her water dish. So provide a big water dish. My Nile monitor is only a baby. Um, she's only about uh, probably eight inches long. Um, so, yeah, provide a big water dish. Because obviously Nile Monitor, they live by the Nile, they live by rivers, um, they spend most of their time in the water, hunting for fish and whatever else is on the banks. Um, these guys get big. They are not for beginners. I know you might find them in a reptile shop and think, oh, that's cute, that's pretty, I'll have one of them. Um, these guys get big quick. Uh, and they're renowned for not the nicest temperament, so... Only experienced really, because uh, if they do give you a nip, um, it will hurt. My one's bitten me twice now. The first time didn't hurt. The second time she caught me on 
the, the finger there if you can see it only little needle holes but it really hurt um, so I can only imagine what a bite would be like from a teenager or an adult you know you're, you're going to be going to hospital with stitches it's going to hurt um, so get one of these scarcely um, do your research you're going to need to you know an insane enclosure for when they're big you cannot stick them in like an eight foot tank you know with a big water dish at the end that's not that's not enough for a nile monitor they're quite active you know the diurnal um they're quite an active lizard so do not mess about with these guys um like i said for experienced people only um and you know they're heating you know you need a 120 basking spot you know ambience need to be around 90 you know um you got to keep these guys warm you know these guys like it really hot so obviously they're from africa um yeah there we go that's the nile monitor and obviously moving on this oh, this is another madagascan uh, panther chameleon uh, an ambalode that's the uh, female to the guy in there so she's got a similar setup to him just on a bit of a smaller scale because as you can see she's a teeny tiny um yeah this is a four foot high by uh, two and a half foot deep two and a half foot wide um yeah so it's the same same thing mist them down keep them nice and humid a basking spot of around 90 to 100 they like that keep the ambience around 90 um 80 you know going down and let the ambient drop as it goes down further down the tank um bearded dragon everyone knows bearded dragons this is drogo um he came to me he was quite fat a bit overweight so if i put him on a on a diet um he has like greens i give him he was a bit constipated so i give him a bit of fruit to help him pass that through and he did eventually um so his tank is obviously it's just made by me that's just tile grout and polystyrene just and made really hard he's got a nice basking spot there that sits at around 100 degrees um and he gets a bit too hot he'll open his mouth let a bit of heat out and then he'll just move like he's moved there because he's a bit hot so he's moved there and then when he gets too hot he comes over here and at night time they like it cooler and he goes down there and sleeps down there so um yeah bearded dragons you know they get to about that size um which probably is about 15 inches or something like that maybe maybe a foot long in length um they get chunky they're not really aggressive i mean they're all they're all mouth really you know or bark no bite um but you do get the odd candidate sometimes that will be a little bit more aggressive but these guys are pretty sound to be honest i've never really had any trouble with him he's a bit hissy when you first pick him up but as soon as you got him out of the viv he settles right down and sits on your lap like a dog you know um yeah that's the bearded dragon then obviously we've got the savannah monitor um these guys they do get big um my one's sitting at about three and a half foot it's a male so we're probably gonna get another foot on that maybe um his heating spot sits at around um 100 to 120 um it always sits in between there on slate um so obviously when it gets to the right heat the thermostat all my tanks are on individual thermostats i don't double things up you know spared no expense they've all got their own thermostats um so uh yeah he likes it really hot and when he gets too hot he normally comes and i don't know if you can just see his nose there let's see if we can open that oh he's had a poo in his water that's the thing you'll find with these guys and most lizards actually they like to poo in their water um there he is chilling in his log and it's, it's nice and damp in there there's some moss and stuff in there um he, he likes it nice and uh, nice and humid in his cold areas. Um, he thinks he's being fed now. No, you came out earlier and you got fed earlier. 
but yeah these guys they like it quite deep so underneath that um that log is another pipe there's a plastic pipe buried underneath all that so he can burrow and get down he can go under his water bowl if needed um so yeah there is quite a bit but this is um obviously you've got to give them a bit of space these guys walk around the savannah um looking for their food they warm up walk around get fed you know soak up the sun then go again these guys are on the move um so yeah this is a it's just shy of eight foot it's 7.8 so it's 20 mil off eight foot so pretty much an eight foot tank um three and a half foot deep by uh I say it's three foot high. I think it's more than that. I think it's about three and a half, maybe ne nearly four foot high. Um, yeah, he's got plenty of room to get around in there. He's got a hot hide down there, which he's buried under. So he goes under there sometimes. But normally you find him just basking on these slates here. Um, these guys get big. Um, they're very, very food orientated. So if you think your lizard's showing you aggression, it's not normally aggression. It's normally because they associate, they associate you opening the viv with food. So as soon as the door opens, you saw his tongue started flicking, he started to come out, because he thinks I'm going to feed him. Um, so I try to give him exercise when I feed him. I, I bring him out the tank and I make him run around um, for his food. He will let me hold him. He's a bit hissy and puffy. Um, but they, they will tame down, um, these guys. But they are um, they are big. You know, they will get big, they will get chunky, and they can be intimidating. It's a shame, because a lot of people buy these things cheap when they're babies, same as an eye monitor, same as any big monitor, really. They buy them cheap as babies, because they're so readily available, and um, realise, oh, oh crap, you know, it's got too big, I can't house it, um, or I'm scared of it, and they get rid of it. Um, I'm not scared of this guy, I'm weary of him, um, because he is a rehome, I've only had him about a week. Um, you know, and if he did decide to bite, obviously it's going to draw blood, it's going to hurt, but, um, I will make sure I do everything in my power not to get bit. Um, humid wise, I do spray this guy down. Um, I like to keep his humidity up to about 60%, um, especially at his, his colder end and inside his log. When I spray the tank down, spray the substrate, I will spray inside the, inside the log, um, to give him that, um, Food wise, these guys, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, because these guys are dustbins, he will eat anything I throw in there. The other day, I had a cat harness, which I was going to try and put around his neck, and he decided he was going to try and eat it, so I had to pry it back out of his mouth. Um, they will eat anything. So, <clears throat> what you, you know, I feed this guy on bugs, dubia roaches, you know, gut loaded dubia roaches, he'll take about 20 of these at a time. Super worms are good. Uh, Morio worms, you know, get, get them gut loaded, feed them up, and then feed them off. Um, I throw a couple of locusts in there every now and then just to keep them active. Uh, let them just run loose in there, and he just runs around the tank trying to catch them. Um, and then every so often, maybe once a month or once every two months, I'll give him a rat. Um, just as a bit of enrichment, just as a bit of protein and a bit of fat. But these guys, you cannot make them live off that that cannot be staple because these guys suffer a lot with a thing called fatty liver disease um you know that they're mainly insectivores i mean in the wild he will scavenge he will if they come across a mouse they are going to eat it you know what i mean but um you know in in captivity if you want to if you want to have a nice healthy lizard for a longer time you know, then then feed them all that all the meat stuff sparingly. You know, keep them on insects, keep them active, keep them running, keep them roaming, make them work for their food. You know, a lot uh, too much, too many times these these monitors get big, and then they literally just uh, just become lazy, and people just feed them off a tongue. You know, and they just don't even move. They just open their mouth and eat, and then go put their head back down. There's no active. You know, they just get fat. And, you know, you want their muscles working. You want to keep them active. Um, you know, when the weather gets better here, I'm going to try and get a harness on this guy and, and take him out into the garden, um, give him a bit of enrichment, you know, let him run around. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he runs around my reptile room fine, and he tripods as well, which is pretty cool. Um, I think that's about it. For the reptiles that I keep, that's about it. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Obviously, I'm, I'm no expert. This is how I keep. This is how I keep mine. You know, there's probably going to be people out there saying you're doing it all wrong. 
Um, maybe I'm doing it wrong in, in other people's eyes, but my reptiles are thriving. They're happy, you know, and uh, if I, you know, if people want to give me constructive, constructive criticism, I'm more than happy to take it in. Um, but space wise and this, that and the other, I've provided plenty for my animals. And uh, that's my knowledge on the animals that I that I keep. And they all seem really happy and really healthy. Um, I've never had any problems with any of them. Um, they've always fed. They've always fed on time. They've never not fed. Um, their lighting is on point. Their heating is on point. That's another thing you've got to check with these. Obviously, these T5s, you know, they're, they're a much better bulb than the T8s. You know, the technology is so much better. But you've got to check these bulbs, you know, at least once every six months. I mean, you probably get a year out of them, but, you know, check them. Make sure you, you check them. I tend to change mine every eight months. Um, I've got a list somewhere in here where I've written down the dates of where I installed the new bulbs. So I know I can go back to check that and think, right, that one needs changing. I'll change it out. So anyway, guys. Um, I hope that was educational for you. Um, any questions, please please ask in the comments or anything you want to say to me, talk to me in the comments. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Um, I do breed chameleons. I do have eggs. Uh, I've got 59 eggs at the moment um, brooding in the, uh, in the incubator um, of little veiled chameleons they're going to be happy and jumping around soon i do have five mountain horn dragon babies as well um so if people are interested let me know in the comments and we can go from there cheers guys